In this video, we're talking about another video that discourages you from getting an engineering degree and why I think it's wrong, and we're starting right now. Hey, 1% Nation, I'm Jake Voorhees, and welcome back to the 1% Engineer Show, where we empower young engineers to rise to the top 1% of their career. So if this is you, then make sure you hit the notification bell and subscribe. In the description below, you will find the free 1% Engineer Kit, access to the Discord server with 300 engineers, link to the IG page, and lots of other good stuff. So check out the description below. We're still looking for some roles, guys. We need a Discord manager. We need researchers. We have a business development opportunity. We have a blog writer opportunity. We have a core team actually working and helping on 1% Engineer from all over the world. So if you want a virtual internship, comment below. With that being said, let's jump right into this video, guys. Lately, I made a video criticizing Matthew Tran, who has a huge YouTube channel called Engineer Truth, but he's a little weird in his communication and encouragement to young engineers about what you should do with your degree. And sometimes he says, don't be an engineer, do something else. And I think that's wrong. So check out that video, guys. But this one about Jarvis is a little different. So I really like Jarvis. I I watched his come up. I remember when he was under 100,000 subscribers two, two and a half years ago, maybe three years ago, when he was working with Mayuko at Patreon, I was watching both of their content. And Jarvis started off just like a lot of people in Silicon Valley, making videos about his software engineering career and about his day in the life, what it's like to be in San Francisco, things like that. And then what happens, I don't understand this, but inevitably so many of these tech and software influencers, software engineering influencers, they blow up and they inevitably make this video like, this is why you shouldn't become an engineer. And I just don't get it. And Jarvis even says this in the beginning of his video. So you alienated all of your subscribers with one video? Yeah, pretty much. And he knows that it's an ironic piece of content for his community, but there's a big piece of this that has shock value and sort of negative branding. And just right off the cuff, it's like, oh wow, Jarvis doesn't think that people should be an engineer. Even though he did, maybe I should really listen to him. And that's why I'm making this video because for some of you, maybe you shouldn't become an engineer. And there's some points within his video that don't make sense to me. And I'm setting the record straight because I think if you made it here, I think if you looked at his video, I think if you looked at a lot of content about what you should become or a day in the life of certain engineers, the reason why you're consuming this content is because you know it's the right path for you. So don't be alarmed, don't be afraid. That's what this video is for. So let's get started with my commentary on Jarvis's video. After he jokes about pushing his entire community away by saying don't be an engineer. What was the point? Self-sabotage? About 30 seconds in, he talks about how computer science isn't for everyone. We know that. That's why 1% Nation exists. Jarvis, if you had an engineering degree, maybe you wouldn't have totally left your computer science career behind and you wouldn't have made this video. Then he talks about how it's very common for people in his world to sort of bounce around and not even be using their computer science degree. And that's super common too. I know plenty of engineers who are working in other types of engineering or even me myself. I left the civil engineering industry behind two years ago as well, but I'm still using my degree and it got me to where I was headed. So it's not bad to major in computer science and then have it launch you into something else. And I just want to say this isn't that alarming. This is kind of normal. A lot of engineers do this too, guys. And I'm really glad about a minute in that he does give this disclaimer and says not all people are the same and this advice is not going to be universal for everyone i hope you guys know that and then he says only you can prevent forest fires just kidding but only you can actually know what's best for your career and that's exactly right we're all just like snowflakes guys kind of but some of this advice i think that he's providing is super duper narrow and niche for silicon valley startup related and also heavy tech competitive san francisco type of attitudes and that's why i think it's a little bit misguided for a global software engineering and computer science perspective so again just because you bounce around within your career and you sort of go in and out of your industry, that's super duper fine. Actually, some of the smartest people do that because it's not that easy to be able to do that. But computer scientists, if they're killing it and they're good software engineers, they can sort of move around and get any types of jobs because software engineering and computer science is really just a tool to make other things happen for you. It's just a skill set. Then he gets into a list of things that are negative about software engineering. He says that 
all your friends and all your people are going to ask you tech support questions. It's like, guys, you're engineers. Anybody in tech is going to get that no matter what. So I find this is like a waste of valuable time to be talking about a pro or a con. This is like a fake example. I don't know why he puts that first. You're supposed to put the most important stuff first in a video. So I don't get that. It goes on some big joke skit about that for another 30 seconds or so. And anyway, I think it's something with the ink cartridges. Then about a minute 48, he talks about how, oh, and suddenly everybody you know is an entrepreneur with a million dollar app idea and trust them it's going to be a success all they need is for somebody to do literally all of the work and it's like you know Jarvis who are you surrounding yourself with I know that you're in San Francisco but if all your friends are just people who work in software engineering and they have this million dollar idea and but they need somebody to do all the work this is not the attitude of winners not in the history of entrepreneurship in the history of San Francisco never has there ever been a startup team that works like that you have people who grind and do the work and put in the time and invest in a project in a startup team and really want to change the world and they don't show up with some sense of entitlement. I mean, geez, talk about first world problems, Jarvis. Like, you know, I'm sorry that you work in a cool industry where people are working on things that can actually change the world in a very inspiring part of the world that everybody wants to be in to work on tech, to work on startups, to work in software and things like this. Like, how can you possibly complain that you are literally in the backyard of an ecosystem that so many people in tech want to be a part of? This is probably why you have all these friends who've left computer science behind are you surrounding yourself with a bunch of people who don't have any ambition and don't have any work ethic? They just pontificate about great ideas and don't put in any time? Like, is that why? Because there are a lot of people in Silicon Valley who are actually working on something awesome and actually putting in the grind and putting in the sweat equity and putting in the time to build something cool and change the face of the world. So I don't know who you're talking to, Jarvis, but there's a lot of people who are actually doing the right thing. So you need to go find them, man. After tech support complaints and how everybody has a world-changing idea complaints, Yo, I've got an idea for the next Facebook. It's Facebook, but in space. The third thing he mentioned is about how there's this elitism culture around it and how people, they pick on each other in Silicon Valley and about like, wow, you code in Python? True programmers code in C++. Ha, <laughs> C++ is for melons. Really real programmers code in C. You're not a real software engineer. And I find that this is actually super common in all industries. If you look at DJs, if somebody's not using a specific software, they will make fun of them. Or if you look at engineers and they're not using a certain type of phone or a certain type of computer, or they're not doing something in a way that the status quo or the, the upper end of the norm thinks is appropriate, you're going to get dissed and you're going to take shade, even if you're doing something better or easier. But if you're not doing what the raw elite people think is the way to go, then you're gonna get a little bit of criticism and that's okay. I think people should be okay with that criticism and just be comfortable being who they are. We're gonna get into this pretty soon, guys, but Jarvis has this complex where I think he cares too much about what other people think. And if you're a programmer who works at Patreon, and you have a good job, who cares what type of computer you have? Why do you care what these other people think, even if they're trying to be elitist programmers? You're not out there trying to do a startup, Jarvis. What do you care, man? This is a big self-esteem thing, you know? So engineers, keep that in mind. Just because you have an engineer who's like an honor student and this and that, and like, oh, you took six pages do your homework I did it in eight lesson number three guys is don't ever let people make you feel bad because you're doing what is best for you and you're doing what's most comfortable for you and what makes the most sense to you that person is not you again we're all snowflakes guys so don't let these elite people in all the industries and in every sector of everywhere in the world he even uses gamers as an example I think of athletes right now or I think of typical small business people like oh you did this I did this one. what people do is they want to create some sort of facade where they feel like they did more work or they had a harder journey than everybody else like oh yeah but in the good old days so this is what it is and you have to see what they're trying to do they're trying to make themselves feel better because they're boosting their self-esteem with this so don't let this hurt you guys you have to be aware of what's really going on and be grateful of what you have and really reflect in your situation and even though your, your friends might be annoying sometimes you got to think about what's going on wow I'm in this scenario where everybody would trade places with me maybe I should look at this from a different 
different perspectives. So always take things from a 40,000 foot view and try to have some gratitude guys and try to make sure that you're being realistic about what's really happening because the grass is always greener. There's always something better from your situation right now. But if you're grateful for what you have and you're realistic about your career journey, especially when you're young, then you're not going to feel like you have anything negative to say about something that's happening and it's awesome right in your backyard. And then in minute number four, this video gets really interesting to me. So Jarvis goes in on a thing that is a real issue and I really support drivers here and I want to talk about this. So I swear I worked on features that millions of users have used. I went to a good school. I've received, you know, awards and scholarships. And still there are people on the internet that'll tell me that I'm not a real programmer or that all of my achievements are because of affirmative action or something. It gets old. I guess just because he's not playing the whole startup game, he's in Silicon Valley, he's where he was working for Patreon, a really good company. He says that he gets a lot of hate and he gets a lot of flack. And he even says that he gets comments about affirmative action. I understand Jarvis and I am not gonna criticize you at all for this because this is still a huge issue. Any engineer who is of color or a woman or any sort of historically underrepresented group still gets commentary, still gets prejudice and still gets judgment. And so I fully do understand and have no negative things to say. Like I hear and see the type of commentary, the friction and the barriers that are placed around people who are of color within tech. This is a big issue. At the same time though, man, what you've let these people do is really affect you. And if you think that this has been a substantial reason why you changed your career, then I think it's a big mistake is because this is a confidence exercise and a self-esteem exercise is that even though you have all these elite programmers around you, and even though you may have people who are hitting you with micro aggressions, prejudicial comments and things like this, just because of what you look like or where you come from or this type of thing, then you got to have the confidence to still stand and prove them wrong. So many people in the history of the world have worked and grinded and struggled just to say, you know what, I can do it. And they believed and they had people around them who believed in them. And this is where you got to go, guys. You have plenty of people who are going to tell you that you're inadequate. And Jarvis, man, you have no reason to think that. You went to a great school. You went to Georgia Tech, an amazing university for engineering and computer science. In fact, I applied to Georgia Tech for grad school. I didn't even get in. And then on top of that, you were honors, an honors degree from a great engineering school. And then you did a TA. And then you made it in San Francisco. You made it in Silicon Valley. And then you ended up working for a major household name brand tech company, Patreon. Honestly, Jarvis, you have done everything you need to do to be credible and stand up next to these other engineers. What you've done is you've let them hurt your psyche. That's why I don't have any sort of criticism with you, but more of a comment of support for any engineer that feels like they are not the absolute regular status quo. So basically anybody who's not an English speaking, straight, Christian, white male from America, right? There's a lot of engineers that we feature on this channel, that we talk about on this channel, and that are out there in the world who don't have those privileges. That's what we're talking about. The privilege to be a part of the typical status quo. And for all of you that are not within that, you have to make sure that you know you are good enough and surround yourself with as many people who are telling you that, oh, you suck, you're not good enough. You got to get those people away from your life. And honestly, Jarvis, if everybody at Patreon is like that, is telling you that you suck, then you needed to leave. And if everybody in Silicon Valley and, and San Francisco is that prejudicial and is that judgmental and says those types of negative things, then you should leave San Francisco. But this is a confidence exercise and a self-esteem exercise. And yes, you have uphill battles, guys. And yes, you have things against you, but it is possible. It's more of a mindset training. So that's lesson number four within this, guys. You become what you think about. And the more that you listen to these people and your self-speak harmonizes with these negative things that people are saying. And so you got to either get that stuff out of your head, guys, or get fully away from that stuff, guys. So after those things, Jarvis starts to get into the fifth disbenefit around working in Silicon Valley. And he says that there's no guarantee you're really going to be working on what you want to work on. And for intro engineers, he does say that this is reasonable. And that's absolutely true. There's really no expectation that you're going to get to show up to work every day and pick what you want to work on. That's what you need to do during the job interview, guys, is you need to make sure that the type of projects that you want to participate in actually are won by the engineering company that you are going to work for. And so this is where you talk about with your employer, with your boss, also the types of work you want to be doing.
growing and you want more flexibility and control over your schedule. You get those things, but you don't get those in a day-to-day -day basis. You get those during annual check-ins and quarterly reports and things like this. When you're young, there is no expectation or culture that you're going to pick what you work on. But he does acknowledge that this is normal. And he also talks about how there's a lot of older senior engineers who they are very talented, but they end up working in something that's really boring for them and they don't want to do it. And that's honestly because they have allowed themselves to settle into a career job where they haven't communicated what they want to their boss and they may not even have the luxury of being able to do that. Maybe they've tried, maybe they've failed, but what they've done is they either are too afraid to bring it up, don't know how to bring it up, or they've tried to bring it up and they're willing to accept the money as compensation for not having control over their, their career and their day to day. These are all things that you can negotiate into your career later on, but what he's talking about for young engineers is totally unreasonable. There's no expectation that you are gonna dictate what you get to work on, but you do have authority once you're good enough. If you can establish this, if you can be so good they can't ignore you, then you get a little bit more bargaining chips at the table when you talk to your boss about future things. So make sure you stick to this so that you can get what you want out of the culture of your career. He talks about the free food, the nap pads, and all the services that a lot of San Francisco engineers and employees experience. He says that there's business value to this. We all know this. We all know that the food and the nap pods are to keep you at work as much as possible to make you comfortable with it. But then he said something a little bit alarming to me that I didn't really think about, but then he said it's to make you really reliant or dependent on your employer. And I'm like, Ooh, wow. You know, if I had a place that fed me three times a day and was really good food and had a gym and had nap pods and all this stuff, I love the nap pods example. I would probably never buy groceries, never cook and become dependent on them too. So that was a little scary. So it kind of was a, a quick little lesson, guys. Make sure you never become dependent on your employer because if you then become unhappy, maybe this is why some of these engineers fall into roles that they hate, but they stick around because they have become dependent. They're reliant. They can't leave. They need to literally learn how to cook and, and feed themselves again in order to, to leave. And that's just a really uncomfortable thing, guys. So don't let that be you. Gets interesting from here, guys. About five minutes in, he starts to talk about the hedonic principle in the sense that once you have all these luxuries in Silicon Valley or at your fancy tech job, you have all the perks that he says they sort of lose their luster immediately. And there is something about this that with humans and their lifestyle, once they have more money, they usually find a way to spend it and they just ramp up their lifestyle changes. And then once you settle into those lifestyles, like once you get a car or once you can go out and order food at restaurants with your friends, what happens is once you do that for six months or a year, you, you say, oh, I could never go back to that. I could never do that again. But like, yeah, you could, because if you had no money or if you were in college again, you easily have ramen or something like this. But this is just a human psyche thing. And I think for young people, you work towards those perks and you work towards those good things. And then one day when you get them, lose their luster. But if you're making $100,000 right out of school in San Francisco and you get all these perks, there's definitely a sense of entitlement and there's a lack of gratitude if it wears away immediately when you get there. There needs to be a gratitude exercise within this content, guys, because you're not always going to get to do what you want. You're not always going to get to choose what people talk about in your backyard. If it's exciting, don't complain about it. If you get a great job at a great company with great perks, it shouldn't wear off immediately. This is a little ridiculous. If you really feel proud and this was the right job for you and you're in the right city and this is the right everything for you, then it won't wear away right away. So Jarvis, he felt like getting those perks and getting this fancy job was going to make him feel a little different, but he's maybe working on the wrong thing or he doesn't have the right mindset. There's a mindset shift that needs to happen here. That's why I talked about this, guys. And I talk a lot about this on the channel is that you have to have a winding career that carves out the ability to have impact, to make a difference, to help a body of people, to save the environment somehow. And within Patreon, I would imagine they'd have that because they're helping creators be independent and be sustainable. And they really are making a difference. So maybe that wasn't baked into the culture enough. So that's really what I think is not working towards the money and the perks and the, and the nap pods is working towards making a difference working towards changing the world, working towards doing something that you can be proud of, that you can talk about on, during nights and weekends and feel like you're doing good in this world and you're making a difference. This is key. Jarvis doesn't talk about this at all. And I think that's what he's missing in this career is that the luster wears away from the perks and the good job. But if you actually are making a difference, this is what will keep you happy, guys. And so then he starts to talk about reasons why you should become a computer scientist or a software engineer. And don't do it just because it's cool, because it's trendy, because it makes a lot of money. Those things are not going to make you happy. 
Do it because you want to do it. And again, do it because you want to build stuff and make stuff and create stuff. This is what real 1% nation truly is. This is why I'm making this video about a computer science degree is because computer scientists can end up working as engineers. So after saying, you know, do something because you want to do it, it's a little confusing. It jumps into, you know, most startups fail and there's no guarantee your project's going to make it. He hasn't really been talking about entrepreneurship or startup founders or that sort of thing. His audience, I believe, is people who want to work in Silicon Valley because that's what he's done. So I don't really understand why he's saying that most startups fail because we haven't been talking about why startups fail or startups at all besides you talking about your friends with no ambition and their crazy ideas, Jarvis. But we know most startups fail. 90% of all small businesses don't even make it to year five. And in the startup community, it's far fewer than that. The startups that sell out for a billion dollars, they're so rare that we call them unicorns. And then he says that there's plenty of talented people who end up working in a role that they don't like and they hate because he says the quote, because of the sheer concentration of talent and the limited opportunities available that they might be interested in. So I'm a little confused about this because these are entirely two different things. Are we talking about opportunities or are we talking about following the right career direction for you? Can't find the right fit, the right job because of the sheer concentration of talent and the limited opportunities available that you may be interested in. And there's not limited opportunities available. There's tons of opportunities out there. But to find things that you are interested in for the right amount of money, that's a different topic than having the right amount of opportunities. So I find this education and the lesson from this a little conflicting there. Geez, Jarvis, I see why you didn't make an engineering education YouTube channel. And then he says a grand finale of things about his computer science degree. Four-year university programs can often be difficult and draining. Everybody knows this. He doesn't mention anything about student loans. You really should mention those because that's a big consideration of a four-year versus a boot camp versus self-taught. You can also not be exposed to the resources for making yourself appealing to companies. And what do you mean you may not be exposed to the resources at a four-year school that gets you into big companies. Not have access to the internet, no LinkedIn, no Reddit, all of these online support communities or resources for the 1.3 million people working in software development in America alone. He says, yeah, boot camps are okay, but they require a lot of self-teach and learning on the side. But this is the case for all disruptive industries. You always have to stay on the ball. You always have to stay on the pulse of things. So this goes without saying. He says, the reason why hobbyist programmers are successful is because they spend a lot of time outside of work or school doing this stuff. This is how it goes. I mean, there's books and books about this, about the 10,000 hour rule, how in order to be a pro and an expert and be truly good at something, you have to spend 10,000 hours, that's 40 hours a week, times a year, 2,000 hours per year times five. It's five years of doing something before you really know how it goes. What are you trying to teach people, Jarvis, so that you can have a successful career and work in Silicon Valley and be like you, go to a great school, get an honors degree, get a TA position, make it to Patreon and not do any work and not do any learning outside and just kind of waltz. This is how it goes. Jarvis, you're a smart guy. You have good ambition. You have good work ethic. And the reason why you've done all these things and had all these opportunities is because you're adequate, credible, and you're good at what you do. So don't teach people that there's an easier path than you because literally to do what you did and Mayuko's done and what Joma have done is you got to be awesome. And that doesn't come from talent. It comes from hard work and dedication, passion, putting in the time. So don't make it sound like you're complaining, Jarvis, because you did a lot of hard work to get to the position that you're in. And it's worth it because a lot of people would do more work to trade for that spot. And then right before seven minutes, he said he doesn't regret getting a computer science degree and doing everything he's done. No sh and even though he's made some good friends, he's not doing it anymore, but it's enabled him to have the privilege and have the financial means and the ability to go out and do whatever he wants now. And he left his job behind. And then I really don't like how he ends this. He validates this whole video in the title by using Jerry Seinfeld as an example, because when Seinfeld was asked by young comedians back in the day, like, hey, should I become a comedian? He would tell them no. And the reason that Jerry would say he would tell them no is that a real comedian needs to hear that you suck and you're not good enough and you need to consider something else by the people that they idolize in order to have the grit and the work ethic to get up and do it anyway. And so I really don't believe in that because then you only have the people who have personal vendettas and honestly the I just want to prove it to you and do this just to do it type of people who are in it. I know tons of people who did things just because somebody told them that they weren't good enough and then 
they didn't actually end up needing the thing or doing the thing. They did it just to do it, just to prove it to people. And I find that to be the wrong attitude. Plus, there's so many people on the internet that are so impressionable that they could be 16, 17. They could even be a sophomore or junior in college and university who is potentially transferring into a different major. And it's content like this that won't even give their career journey a chance. And I don't like that because people are so afraid to make the wrong choice that they might see a video like this and entirely steer around it. And so I do not think the Jerry Seinfeld example or strategy is valid. You should be realistic and do what you're doing, but the balance is really vital, Jarvis. And I think that this sort of negative content around software engineering is not the right way to do this. And then finally, Jarvis leaves us with a very uplifting message from somebody who I really like, Hank Green, about how you're on this journey and you should be finding things that you like and then you do it enough such that you don't like it anymore. And then you find something else that is pivoting away from that or the next step from that. Because each and every day, and I love this part, he says, what you're doing might change, but each and every day you're working on the same thing and that is you. Such a beautiful thing because honestly that is what we're doing we're on this journey we're on this expedition to explore this world and to be all that we can be and make an impact and change it and do something cool and meet other people who are trying to do the same thing and be happy and find a tribe who are all sort of doing this this is the point of this so Jarvis thank you for all the nice things that you said in this video Jarvis I wanted to make this video to provide some more support and a counter perspective to some of the things that I didn't agree with so with that being said who wants to become a computer scientist who wants to become a software engineer or an engineer in general? Comment below. If you haven't seen the criticism I made about Matthew Tran's Don't Major in Engineering video, make sure you check that one out. It's been our biggest video hit ever. Thanks again, guys. I hope this video helped you. If you are a young engineer and you want to rise to the top 1% of your career, we release a lot of content about that. So make sure you hit the notification bell and subscribe. If you want a virtual internship and you want to join our core team, comment below. And if you want access to the free 1% Engineer Kit, access to the Discord or the IG page, then look at the links in the description. Thanks again for watching the show, guys. We'll see you again in another video. Bye-bye.